Okay, so let's talk about the reliability of this 328i. Because that was one of the main reasons why I bought it. Obviously, you have the 335, which is the turbocharged in line six. I opted to go non turbo, naturally aspirated. And the reason why I did that was because number one, I used to have a E36 with the exact same motor. I had a 98 328i. And that was back in my mechanics days, so I was very, very comfortable with working on the motor itself. So that was number one. But number two is they've been using this inline six for quite a long time. I mean, we're looking at 20 years or so. So that's given them 20 years to refine the designs and fix the flaws. So in my mind, looking at the 328, non-turbo or the inline six non-turbo version was the way to go because I'm not introducing a new system that hasn't been tested yet. So when I got this car it had a hundred and thirty thousand miles on it. I'm now sitting at a hundred and thirty five thousand miles on it. Now what have I done to it mechanically since I've gotten it and what has been my experience in relation to is it reliable or not so the first thing I had done when I got the car was I took it immediately to a shop I don't wrench on my own cars anymore I don't like to um, so I took it immediately to a shop to have it looked at and turns out it needed a new um, new front struts and also it needed a new compressor for the AC. The compressor is a new, I guess a new type of system that uh, is a hydraulic on off itself and the hydraulic system was failing on it. So I would get intermittent cooling but if the car was sitting still it would be nothing but heat and obviously in Arizona that's not okay. So I had those two things fixed right away. I did go with an upgraded front suspension to Bill Steen front struts so I had those put in immediately and at the same time I also had them fix the compressor itself and put a OEM compressor in so I paid 8500 for the car I then promptly spent another 2500 on the front suspension and the AC system and that's about all I've done so in a total I'm about 11,000 paying for it and repairs now the clutch on this thing is fantastic. It has a lot of life left. I can tell because it's not too firm, it's not too soft. It's exactly where I want it to be. So I feel comfortable that even though I don't have the service records on this car, I feel comfortable that the clutch has been replaced in the past 30,000 miles or so. So that's good news because I know that that bill is not one that I want to take on right now. So that's good. I did just have tires rotated and balanced. Obviously, that's going to be your typical $90 maintenance routine. Um, and then I do have a full inspection coming up for the vehicle itself. Um, I am getting a check engine light for an EVAP right now. Now, here's what I can tell you. I did not buy the car with the EVAP code on it. I decided that using the BMW for a flotation device was going to be how I got through a rainstorm that we were having in Arizona, which is a story for another time. But let's just say there was about a six inch puddle I did not see. I went through it and it cracked the housing of the fuel pump itself. So I had to replace the housing. That actually, now that I think about it, was about a $900 bill, I believe. So all in all, we're looking at about 12, about 12,000 or so um, with tax and all that stuff. So about 12,000 is what I'm in it with that repair. And then obviously the uh, rotate and balance. So now let's talk about reliability on this thing because although it's had those little quirks about it with the cracking of the fuel pump, which was my fault, um, the AC, 
going out um, intermittently and then obviously the struts which is just a normal wear and tear you would expect that from a car with 130,000 miles anyways so all in all I must say that I am very pleased with this car now I don't drive this car regular at all and what I mean by regular is I'm constantly pushing this thing I mean in Arizona you can always get away with 10 10 miles an hour over the speed limit but routinely I mean I'm doing 90 between 90 and 100 miles an hour depending on traffic so I push this thing quite a bit and for all the abuse that I put it through I am just loving it it's taking it in stride it's not giving me any sort of issues Everything feels great. The braking feels great. And overall, I'm very satisfied with it. I wanted a daily driver that I didn't have to worry about. A daily driver that I could enjoy. And one that, you know, was something that when you get out of the car, you turn your head back and you go, that's my car. The head turning car. And so I'm very thankful that that's exactly what I got with this car. Because at the time when I bought this, I was looking at um, two other cars as well. One of them was a 2014, it was either a 2014 or a 2016 Mercedes C300. Because um, I had a C63 prior to this car and I loved the Mercedes brand itself. But this one being manual, it was a cannot pass up deal. So I decided to go with this car and I am very, very pleased with it, and the fact that this is non-turbo gives me confidence that even though I'm just about to turn 135,000 miles on it, this thing easily has another 50,000 miles, assuming I keep a regular maintenance schedule, which I plan to. So definitely a really fun car, um, and one that if you guys didn't see, I took it on a road course, an autocross course, and I made a video for that probably about a month ago or so, but I am going to do another autocross event here in January, so I do have the camera set up um, now so I can record my runs, but I'll be doing it in this thing, and I have confidence that it's going to perform very well in the autocross itself. Now, could I make this an autocross car down the road? Absolutely, I could. Is it in the plans right now? It is not in the plans right now. This is too fun of a daily driver for me to gut it and make it a race car. So I'm gonna enjoy it for what it is. But I wanted to make this video for you guys that are on the fence about should I get a 328 or not. I can only speak on 328s. Obviously, the 335s I have no experience with. I have heard they have some common issues, but I've never personally owned one, but I wanted to give you just my review of the reliability of this 328, because this is a fantastic car and I'm loving it right now. So if you guys are enjoying the content of this channel, you want to make sure to smash the subscribe button, it's down there. Also turn on the bell notification, because I'm going to start posting a lot more videos on this channel and you want to make sure that you are on the up and up when I post them. So with that being said, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and take care.